Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week it is September. We are approaching the best time of year, the fall, Halloween season. I wanted to do a ever so slightly spooky fall inspired mushroom magic nighttime scene painting for this week. I have my three standard brushes that I use in most classes. So I got my big square brush, my medium sized pointed brush, and my small detail brush. I don't need the extra small one today. These are from my four brush set that I use, gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a full materials list, go ahead and check the description box below. The colors that we're going to start with for the background step today, I just have a fair amount of white, a little bit of ultramarine blue, some of my favorite phalo green, cadmium yellow, and some black. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, so our first step here gonna be really simple. We're just gonna grab our medium sized brush and we're going to mix up a nice light blue. It's going to be pretty light, so a fair amount of white. And this is going to be the area where my moon is shining brightly. So it's going to be a big circle of this light blue over here on the left-hand part of my canvas. And then I'm going to fill it all in with circular brush strokes going around and round, okay? Just like so, and it can be all circular like that, or you can come back in, touch everything up nicely. Want to get a nice light blue orb there going on, and then I'm gonna grab a pinch more blue. It's a little bit more saturated blue here, and we're just going to go around that light blue like so, all the way around, and blend it into that light blue, just like so, okay? All right, it's looking good. Okay, I think I'm gonna move to my larger square brush now for the next step, which is just going to be a more vibrant blue, a little bit of a bigger space. So working with a bigger brush, you're going to want to blend it into the light blue in the same way as before, round brush strokes, keeping nice and smooth all the way around. Looking good. Okay. And now I'm going to go one step darker by adding a little bit of black. And as you can see, a little bit of black goes a long way, so just a pinch there. And I'm gonna work my way here to the two sides. The bottom part, I'm gonna come around a little bit, but that's gonna be covered in a minute by the little hillside. So we don't need to worry too much about going all the way down there. Just like so, with this navy blue. Long brush strokes all the way off the canvas. Nice and smooth. A little bit more paint and a touch darker as well. So this is gonna be a little bit lighter than black. That's kind of like our nightfall coming in here from the side. I'm just blending that as well. Very nice. Okay, that looks good to me. Retiring that brush for now. And we're gonna grab some green now. So I'm gonna mix my phalo green with my yellow. And I'll get this nice kind of true green. And I'm going to just bring this right through my blue. 
create a nice whimsical slope. We're not going for photorealism today. Keeping it fun and spooky. Okay, a little bit more paint and we're just allowing it to blend slightly with the blue and just creating a little bit of natural shadow and blending. Okay, you don't want it to be too dark or over blended. So leave a little bit of streakiness in there. And I'm gonna grab just a little bit of a lighter green for a nice highlight because even though it's nighttime, we have a lot of illumination from our crescent moon here. So a little highlight on the hillside looks very nice. And we'll put some on the other side too. And it's good to know which hill is in front of which. So in this case, this front hill is going to go right over the bottom part of that green. All right, that looks great for our first step. Let's go ahead now and let this dry. We're gonna step away and then we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and fresh colors on the piece of palette paper here. So once again, I have more of that beautiful phthalo green. I have some black and white. I have some violet, a little tiny bit of some cadmium red and some cadmium yellow. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back on in. So I'm gonna grab my smallest brush and we're gonna start with our gorgeous moon. And I'm just gonna grab yellow and white together. I wanna make sure I have enough paint here, but I want it to be pretty vibrant, so about equal parts, white and yellow. All right, and now we're gonna do a pretty good size moon right here in the lightest part of our light blue gradation here. And I wanna try to make it as circular as I can. I like to do this kind of thing in one brush stroke. Even if it sort of trails off there at the end and then come back and finesse it is what I say. Okay, coming right all the way around, always starting much smaller than I think I'm going to end up. It's much easier to adjust something by making it larger than by trying to shrink it back down. You gotta get your background color back out. Very labor intensive. But you can always cover things with an extra layer of paint with acrylic painting. So in my opinion, there's really no way to make permanent mistakes. Right, and then I'm just thickening up the center part to add to that crescent shape. Okay, nice and circular all the way around. Feel free to use a tool to help you get a nice circle if you're not confident in winging it. Okay, all the way around like a, what are those called, protractors? No, a compass, that's what it's called or just anything circular like a glass. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, going to now do something a little unconventional. I'm gonna use the back side of my brush to create some lovely stars. I'm just gonna put those all throughout my little sky. A little composition here all over blue area, building nice little constellations if you want. Okay, very, very cute, I like it. All right, now let's jump into the next part, which is going to be our focal point of the painting, which is going to be our adorable little mushrooms. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch these out with white. So I have a clean brush just using the front end like normal. And I'm gonna start with the sort of hat here, the cap of the mushroom. 
and I'm gonna start with my larger one. I'm gonna do a little curved line to start. And then I'm gonna come around and make a sort of bulbous swoop all the way around. Okay, it's almost like a flying saucer. And then I'm gonna do a little kind of curved brush stroke there. Just like so. That's gonna be the top part of the mushroom. This is gonna be underneath. And this will make a little bit more sense once we start filling in. Just getting our sketch right now. Okay, and then from the top part here, we're gonna connect it down onto the ground. So curved lines like so. I'm gonna go a couple inches down, then we're gonna do another little bulbous brush stroke on either side and then kind of the same idea again a little curved bottom and look at how cute that is we've got a little mushroom so cute and then the mushroom next door i'm gonna make a little bit smaller and this one's not going to be as fully mature so it's going to be a slightly different shape it's just going to be round on top here And then we're gonna do a little swoop. A little bulbous, sort of like a U shape there. And then the bottom part is gonna be a little bit simpler. It's gonna end a little bit lower than this mushroom, but not all the way off the bottom of the canvas. You wanna have them kind of just growing there on the hillside together. And look at how adorable. All right, now we're gonna fill those main shapes in. So I'm gonna make a really beautiful, vibrant purple by mixing my blue and my red together. We're just gonna create a lovely lavender, sort of warm, light purple. Not too light, still pretty saturated. Just light enough to have some good coverage power. But I still want it to have some good vibrance as well. Okay, we're gonna take this into the top part of our mushroom. These are just a fantasy mushroom. Purple fantasy, and I think purple looks really nice with the yellow moon. Kind of bringing those spooky colors in, but you can paint your mushrooms whatever color you like. It is your fantasy land. And then we're gonna swoop our way there, that sort of S shape gonna bring that all the way around to cover all of the sketch line that we had at the beginning and just finessing that shape you just want to cover see I had a little star there that I had to cover and that's okay that's why we work from the background to the foreground love painting this way with acrylics I do graphic design too so I like the idea of the layers. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of a light color here, a little bit of a light purple, just that same color. And I'm gonna add a few little highlights. And just kind of make it a little bit more interesting there. Rather than the solid purple, kind of accentuate the curves of the mushroom. And if you've gone too bold, you can always tone it down a little bit again with that purple. And then we're gonna do the same thing with that same color in our little guy. So cute. All the way covering the sketch line, same idea. It's okay if it blends a little bit with your white. Right, and just getting that all filled in with purple as well. Super cute, very storybook. Okay, just like so, I'm gonna grab a little bit of my light purple, same way, and just kind of accentuate the little guy's curves as well. A little bit of a highlight, just very subtle. the way around. Okay, 
looking very cute. I'm gonna rinse my brush well, get all the purple out of it. And then we're gonna fill in this bottom part and you may sort of lose sight of these sections here that we've done in our little pre-sketch. But we're gonna find them again later with a little bit of shadow work. But for now, we're just gonna fill this whole section in with white. Okay, just solid like so. Right up to the purple, trying not to blend it with the purple, but you wanna to touch it. And all the way, every little bit here, filled in with white. Nice and dainty with our brush, not applying too much pressure, very light handed. That's the way to go. Okay, just filling that whole stem part of the mushroom in as well. Super simple. I think these shapes turn out so cute. Okay, very nice. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush again. And we're gonna let our mushrooms just dry for a moment now. We're going to work on doing some ferns. So that's another really fun and whimsical element of today's painting. So I'm gonna grab some of my gorgeous green and I'm going to mix it with a fair amount of white. I'm gonna get this really pretty teal color. I'm going to use this as my first main color here for some fern shapes and we're going to do these really cute little fiddle heads which is uh, the fern before it's unfurled um, they take this really pretty curly cute shape so i'm going to do that first and they're still just going to be growing out of the ground right so you're going to have a little curly cue to start then you're going to bring it down to the ground like so down and then our other shape is going to be the unfurled fern which I'm gonna have one coming from the bottom here and coming up and you're just gonna work your way down from the top creating brush strokes that get larger as you go down and longer all the way off the canvas such a cute and simple shape. And now you get to just create your gorgeous little fern garden, however you like. And you can have these little fiddle heads coming from either direction. And you can do a tight spiral like I'm doing or like a slightly less one so like one that just goes around a couple times, deciding where to put it. Okay, like so, a little bit smaller. Okay, and then we're gonna have some ferns coming from this direction as well. And you'll need one brush stroke there on the end too. And then you're just working from the top down longer and longer with the brush strokes. It's okay if it all just kind of looks all the same color. We're gonna add some highlights. It's gonna make everything look especially good. Okay. Just like so. And again, this is your garden, so you can create it however you like. I think the shapes are just really cute. And I think maybe less is more, but that's up to you. Okay, graceful, consistent brush strokes working our way down. Okay. at how whimsical this is looking. 
yellow and purple are complementary colors across from each other on the color wheel. I do have a course specifically on color theory, which is how to come up with different color combinations, but also how to mix colors, mix different colors. I have a course all about that on Skillshare, and you can watch it for free by using a link that I have for my students, and that's in the description box below. You get a free month, so you can watch my class and other people's as well. There's a lot of good stuff on Skillshare. Check that out, please. And I'm going to add a few more little brush strokes of grass as well to kind of fill out the remainder of this little garden area. And you can have some grass growing around your mushrooms, and you can have some grass kind of growing towards the back and coming here from the front. Super cute. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab just a slightly lighter version of that color now for some highlights. So I did rinse my brush, but I'm gonna grab some yellow just to make it a little bit of a different color as well, and then also bring a little bit more of that yellow in as a complementary accent to my purple. Okay, so light greenish yellow, and just what a pretty color that is. Okay, then I'm going to just really quickly come in here and highlight my little fiddleheads, so cute. And we'll do a quick little highlight on our ferns as well. And this is just whimsical and fun no need to get super nitpicky also on the grass so everywhere that you just took that first color we're just gonna add a nice little highlight in super simple okay these guys are a little a little too close but that's okay they're getting cozy in their little garden i believe that Fiddleheads come up around the same time as mushroom season in the late fall. But I know that fiddleheads are edible. You can grow them up. Some mushrooms are edible, of course, some are very deadly, so be careful. Okay, a little highlight on my center part too, don't want to forget. There we go. Your nice little highlights all throughout. Okay, just on every brush stroke. So cute. Okay, let's go back to our mushrooms now for some final touches. So if you need, you can grab a little bit more white and hit it with a second coat. I can see a little bit of my background. So I want a little bit more white, okay? But we're also going to do some important shadowing. So I'm gonna grab a light gray. I'm going to come around, let's do a little bit darker. A medium gray. Come around all the outside edges here with that medium gray. And then I'm going to take a few brush strokes to sort of create some interest there in this shape. So that one's a little bit, I think, too harsh. So what I'm going to do, rinse my brush a little bit. Grab some white, and just blend it slightly. Okay, that looks better. Just like so, we can add any more white back on top if you have to. You want it to be pretty light. All right, not too stripy. Great. Okay, and then same idea underneath here. You might need to hit it with a second coat. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take an even darker gray. And I'm going to shadow right underneath my mushroom. 
where the purple meets the white. So cute. And then I'm gonna do a few curved brush strokes. Right underneath, these three are gonna be coming out in this direction. Okay, and then some curved brush strokes coming from that direction as well. That's gonna give your mushroom a little bit of depth there. Okay, very cute. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I'm gonna do some quick highlights here on my mushroom. So cute. I think I'll go ahead and outline it with black as well just to get a nice clean shape. And I'll go ahead and bring the black all the way around. And looking whimsical today. You don't have to outline it with black if you don't want that sort of cartoon fantasy look. I think I'm gonna take the black a little bit down into the mushroom shape as well. Okay, very cute. I'm gonna do the same thing now over here. Take that black from underneath and bring it all the way around my shape. Super adorable. Okay, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of the light medium gray. Do a little bit of shadowing in here and then grabbing some white again, toning it down a bit. and perhaps a little bit of black as well. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little tiny bit of a dark green just to shadow right where the mushrooms are touching the ground. Just a touch of that dark green. Okay. All right, and let's do a little bit more with that dark green. Just green and black together. I think I like to do a few brush strokes of the green, adding an additional layer of depth to my little forest. Super cute. Okay, it's gonna be our darkest shadow. It doesn't have to be quite on every single leaf. You wanna be a little bit more sparing with it than perhaps you were with the lighter color. Okay, and just a few brush strokes there as well. Just making everything look nice and consistent. I'm gonna be adding some interest there. Look at how cute that's looking. All right, and then let's see a little bit of highlights still needed on this little guy, just with white. And then my final step here, I'm gonna add some nice dots onto my mushrooms as well, doing that same back of the brush technique. Very nice. If you painted along today, I would love to see your work. I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club that's specifically designed for my students. Share their work, whether it be from painting along or just from your own studio or imagination. We would love to see you. There's a link in the description box to join that as well. You can put any other final touches that you'd like on your painting, but that is all the instruction that I have for all of us this week. So let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. Hit like if you liked it. 
please check out my Skillshare links below and please join us over in the art club. All right, that's all I have for us. So until next time, stay creative.